Hey, welcome to another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm the Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ken. Why did I do that? I don't know. We do weird voices all the time. Yeah, man. it's. I fine. do weird voices over at the Laser Dicks a lot too. Yeah, yeah. I've heard the, your episodes. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I do listen to He's you guys. My favorite. My yeah. favorite thing ever is "Sexy Motherfucker," and the king goes, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was great because he did that live, and I was like keeping it yeah <laughs> uh speaking of sexy we've got gabriel hardman on the show mm-hmm. this week oh. and he's here to talk about his uh, image comics book it's a one shot it's uh, the belfry fucking awesome it's awesome it comes out uh, in comic book shops everywhere on comiXology on february uh wednesday february 22nd Ooh. you can also read his other image comic series uh, the invisible republic out now you know kinski's another creator and book he's done uh, he storyboarded quite a few like films which we all mm. you know discuss and of course I guess we recorded it the day before David Lynch's birthday. Oh, yeah. Cool. So it was... How fitting. Yeah. That'll all be addressed. Here, take, <laughs> take a listen. Joining us this week, we have Gabriel Hardman. His uh, one shot, The Belfry, comes out February 22nd in comic book stores everywhere and on Comixology through Image Comics. He's also uh, the co-creator of The Invisible Republic. You may have seen him do uh, some uh, some Star Wars comics. He's done. I mean, he's done quite a bit. He's a storyboard artist. I mean, shoot, we're going to get into all that. Gabriel, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. So... With with the Belfry, we're seeing something very dark, very visceral, very nightmarish. Something that I hadn't really seen you kind of tackle before. What is it that wanted to make you kind of want to do the hard pivot into, I guess, survivalist horror? Uh, well, you know, the honest answer is the the world is horrifying, and I wanted to put those horrifying feelings in a comic book, and uh, you know, like it, it, there were a lot of inspirations for it, but the um, uh, one thing in particular, I, uh, which is something you can, it's, it's in the book and you can see it, uh, is, uh, a pinup I did for a, a horror anthology like a couple of years ago. And it had, uh, a woman with bat wings and it was in a cave and, uh, and had a sort of atmospheric quality to it. And I had, I, it wasn't thought out at the time. I, I and, um, but it was something that stuck with me and I, I wanted to, I felt like there was a story in that world. And, uh, I, and probably my initial conception of that story was a little bit more elegant and atmospheric. And, uh, as I got into it, it just got more and more brutal and angry. And I, uh, uh, but I, but I went with it. I, I'm not really, um, I feel like you should just, uh, take, follow the story where it takes you and, uh, not worry too much about, uh, you know, self-censorship or whatever. Sure. Uh, what was it that made you want to do it as, I mean, kind of in this industry, we certainly see one shots all, all, all around, but what made you want to do it as kind of a more, well, self- I don't know. You never see one shots. I mean, you, maybe you do maybe some from like DC and Marvel that are, you know, kind of supporting familiar characters and stuff, but you don't see them very much. It, uh, but it, wasn't, own, yeah. it wasn't a choice like that though. It wasn't like I, um, I didn't uh, I didn't really like ask anybody for permission about this book. I didn't uh, didn't make a plan. It was actually just something I wanted to do. And uh, when I had a little bit of extra time, uh, I just sat down and made the book and it felt like it wanted to be that length. And uh, so it was uh, uh, it was a one shot. I mean, it was it was it was one shot length. So uh, I, when I finished it, I, I sent it to Image, and uh, and I was just like, well, you know, I did this thing. What do you think? I don't know if you guys put out one shots or not, but you know, what do you think of it? And uh, Eric Stevenson was just like, uh, it looks cool. Let's put it out. So I mean, it's a bit of an experiment. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, you usually, even with a creator and one shots, you do see they're usually part of like anthologies, like Island or Dark Horse Presents. So it was really cool that they kind of gave you the. The, the legs to, to kind of do it on as a, as a true standalone release. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least uh, one, one great thing about image is just their willingness to gamble on stuff, you know, and cr- creatively gamble on creators. So, you know, that's, uh, that's very much appreciated. You, you know, you had of course worked with a company with the invisible Republic. Was that, I mean, in, in doing kind of a more sci-fi story, was that also, I mean, you mentioned that you get out all your fear and all your kind of anger out in in the Belfry, a lot of those frustrations. Oh, not all of it. Just a very small (laughs) proportion of it. I've got plenty to spare, but go ahead. (laughs) A very concentrated dose. Yeah. So what is, what what do you try to get out with the Invisible Republic? Where where, did, where does that what personal place I mean, does that I, come I from? I mean, I think it's not it's 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 probably not as one to one as all that. But I mean, but I, I think a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of stuff in, in Invisible Republic that's about 
uh, you know, grappling with, uh, um, with personal stuff, but put in a, um, in a context of a sort of political sci-fi, a kind of a very, uh, human level gritty political sci-fi story that that's very much about these particular characters and what they're going through. Uh, but that's sort of set against the bigger, um, uh, political things that happen in their world, but but they're really just about uh, it, it's just about the decisions people make and you know the choices people make and how they uh, how they affect each other and the big picture of the world that they're in. Right, you kind of get this idea in Invisible Republic that Kroger is Kroger is just trying to find the truth, and in finding the truth, like their people are the characters are finding themselves. Yeah, I mean, but also uh, Kroger Bab, the um, one of the main characters, who's a uh, he's a journalist of sorts, is also sort of full of shit, you know, and he's not an entirely, you know, like reliable person, and and he at time in the beginning of it, he's he's really out for himself, and uh, and he, you know he has an arc though through the course of the story where uh, we're about to uh, release issue 15 which is the halfway point and uh the end of the third arc and it's it's really a, a lot of what the story is is him you know having this arc where he goes from uh from being you know this kind of self-serve like self-serving schmuck into uh somebody who has to grapple with real things and uh and and care enough to uh you know, to do something, even go as far as, you know, violence or, or uh, things that are far outside what he thought he would be doing when at the beginning of this story. Now, to kind of take it back to um, take it back to, to Belfry, what we're seeing is kind of almost there are almost like shades of Lost and Twilight Zone. I'm thinking about in Twilight Zone when the imp tries to take down the airliner with John Lithgow. And, oh, right. And all that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Or William Shatner. Or William Shatner in the <laughs> original. Yeah. If we want to go OG Twilight Zone, absolutely. But the, uh, what were some of your, I mean, you had mentioned, you know, the, the origins of the Batwing lady. But really, what were some of your narrative origins in this idea of this kind of, I mean, because there is some harsh imagery involving, you know, eyes. <laughs> and that's yeah. sort of, that, that, that's something that really stuck with yeah. me reading, reading the story. Um, just because I've I like how kind of like calm he is about it, too. He's like, hey, you know, I could probably think better if this thing wasn't stuck in my head <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a dreamy quality to it in a certain way sure, yeah. a, certainly a nightmare quality yeah. to it where uh where things are not uh you know the the i i wanted to evoke that quality of of uh something so awful going on and people not reacting quite right and you're never uh and the main character never really being able to get a handle on the situation, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it and uh, ultimately being doomed, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, like uh, in a very elliptical way, though, mm -hmm. uh, I I had, you know, I certainly I actually love horror and I, I love horror and a, a lot of the stuff that I love in horror, though, is um, they're the things that, um, you know, I mean, I think that horror as a genre can get a bad name because you know, you just think of, of, you know, guys, you know, fetishizing actresses, uh, in their thirties playing teenagers, getting their heads chopped off, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, like it, but, but like, I think there's so much that there's so much in the world of horror to explore. And there's, and it's a, it's a genre where you can make a really direct connection and affect people very directly and uh, and so, uh, you know, you can that gives you the opportunity to put all sorts of ideas in there and, and uh, uh, to 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 tell all sorts of stories. And in comics in particular, since comics are just they're just drawings on a page, there's no uh, there's no interactivity unless you, the reader, are coming to it and engaged. So, like, you know, having those very raw emotional things in it uh, in a comic is a is a, a good way to 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 grab the reader by the lapels and kind of make them come into the world that you're trying to to create. Yeah, I I think the one shot uh, format for this was like perfect because at the end it's just like a, this great punch in the face, and I mean that in the best way possible. Like just this kind of like oh wow, and like I I I'm a huge fan of of just art, and the art in this was like metal as fuck. 
I guess is the proper way to put it. Um, if, I mean, I remember re- reading it in the, just the cover. I was like, I said out loud, out loud, I was like, oh shit. Um, the fucking you know skulls and best. Oh, but so, I mean, it's the bat on top of the skull. It's the it's the yeah. best. But like, you know, do you listen to music when you draw? Um, I I I often listen to music when I draw. Um, I uh, uh, but uh, I I don't know if there's if there's anything specific that I would relate to this, okay. I mean, like, uh, you know, it, it's as metal as fuck as the imagery is. It's, <laughs> that's not what I was listening to. Yeah. I was hoping you're gonna be like, you know, it's like ABBA or, you know, something. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I feel like, no, like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, probably the, like the closest thing would be like, uh, uh, you know, eighties to early nineties, Nick Cave and the bad seeds, mm-hmm. that kind of, uh, um, you know, stuff like, uh, uh, like a record, like Henry's dream was just full of this kind of, uh, you know, the sort of kaleidoscopically violent imagery and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and a sort of Southern Gothic from an Australian sort of, uh, quality. I mean, like, I, I, like that's the sort of feel that I, that I like. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, you definitely, I mean, just some of the page layouts are, are, you know, wild, you know, I, and I, that's something that I've, I've kind of discovered just talking to all different kinds of writers and artists, um, doing this podcast is like how much I love the, kind of i don't know if it's the correct terminology but the non-traditional page layout just the using you know i i think what i've what i'm trying to say is like i've realized how much and how important a page layout is that might be obvious but that's something that just reading all these different books especially doing like image reviews and stuff that you guys come up with the craziest it's coolest not, it's not confined page grids, layouts. Yeah. yeah yeah is that something yeah, that you're very aware of when you're working on on a book like this yeah, it's it's what I'm aware of every moment of drawing every comic. I mean, it, the, the the way that the all of those elements, all those very straightforward elements of of how the page is laid out and how you read you you lead the uh, reader's eye across the page and and uh, and where things are are compositionally where things are placed in a panel to lead the reader's eye or affect them in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Uh, like every bit of that is what you're thinking about at every moment. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, because it's like, I don't know, that's just, that's what the, that's what you're doing. That's your whole job is to, to like get, um, is to just be able to, uh, uh, to, to take all of those things that, you know, and all of those things that are even sort of very simple ideas about how comics are made and, uh, tweak them or, uh, just far enough or, or, um, or be very conservative about them at times. And so that the, uh, to just create an impact for the reader and, uh, you know, and it is a, I think it's a little bit of a, a tightrope because you're, if you're, if you go too far with it, you could just, I, I'm not a big fan of um of like very ornamental page layouts that uh that take you out of the book and make you think about hey isn't this an amazing page layout (laughs) you know like i i I think that it's more it's the most important thing would be to just you know keep the reader in there in the uh you know in the story i mean it's all about servicing the story to me now, when you're working on, because for those of you at home that don't know, uh, Gabriel's also a, a you know a big storyboard artist. I feel like you're Chris Nolan's go-to guy. You've been working with him since oh shoot, since I, is it Inception the first film? Yeah, I did Inception. I did three of them. So uh, Inception, uh, the third Batman, and uh, um, uh, Interstellar. So in working in those worlds where it is storyboards being a little more, a little more. Uh, divided by traditional grids and of course almost exclusively focused on action scenes or big set pieces. What is it about, what do you, what different tools creatively do you use storyboarding versus working on comics? Well, I mean, for one thing, it's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, the, the way, I mean, the, the storyboards are just about communicating what, what, uh, you know, what the filmmakers plan to do. Uh, and the storyboard artist is one of the filmmakers. So, uh, and the, so, I mean, the format of it is just defined by the fact that, uh, that you're making a movie and the, and the movie is a big fucking rectangle. <laughs> so, uh, like you got to just fit things in there. Yeah. And so, uh, and that's, that's how, that's the format of how you tell your story. And so you're just trying to express the, the ideas that of, you know, uh, in, in a very practical way. So, um, and it's not all just confined to, to action. I mean, there's a there's a lot of I've done a lot of work that's a, that's more 
uh, sort of crafting more character oriented scenes and uh, scenes that may be visual but not action oriented. And, you know, it really just depends on the situation and the director and uh, and what they want. But um, it's uh, I lost the train of the question, though, as far as. Uh, I mean, creatively, what do you kind of draw from? I, I suppose, I mean, you kind of touched on it with because you're working towards as more of a collaborate or there's more parties involved with it. Yeah, well, so. it is. A, I mean, it is a big, giant collaboration as well as, you know, you're working for the director and it's it's not my movie. You know, it's uh, I'm I'm I've made a lot of, you know, reasonable size con- contributions to movies I've worked on. But it's ultimately it's the, the director's movie and that's how it should be. And you're working for them and you're working to make the movie that they want to make. And, uh, in comics, I'm, uh, I'm telling the stories that I want to tell and I'm, uh, uh, and you know, the way that I want to tell them and I'm much more, it's much more direct creative experience for me, you know, the, and story doing, working on films is essentially my day job. I mean, doing boards for other directors is my day job. Right. So when, in terms of working on say like the planet of the apes comic or a star Wars comic or, or the invisible Republic, which you, you know. Uh, where you have those kind of creators is it what do you kind of glean from working because the belfry is entirely your singular vision right yeah yeah i mean in the the other books um the invisible republic uh karina becco uh and i write it together she's my wife we you know we collaborate on stuff uh it's not a uh it's it's not it's not a committee it's a you know we like uh you know we we just write the thing together and we have a very small group of people. I, I draw it. So, you know, there's, there's not, um, you know, there's not anybody else involved in that way. Uh, Jordan Boyd colors it. And, uh, you know, we just have a very small group of people. And so it's not like, uh, it's, it's not like having to run things by anybody on the, uh, on the freelance books that we did, uh, those license books that we did when we were sort of ramping up, the Planet of the Apes and Star Wars, it was it was that we had to run things by the editor and they then the licensor. But we had an enormous amount of freedom on those books. The Planet of the Apes book was just exactly what we wanted to do. And uh, and it's probably and it's not that it's a it, yes, it has, you know, human like apes in it, but it's but it's not radically different from the kind of thing we do in invisible republic and in certain ways it was like a sort of proto invisible republic you know politically driven uh sort of story for us and uh, star wars was big fun action and um and we had uh you know we had notes to a degree but mostly they were they were in the very beginning when we were pitching the thing and trying and setting up the circumstances of it and most of that stuff was just what we wanted to do we've been very lucky in the freelance stuff that we've done uh in that we're we mostly just told the stories we wanted to tell and uh any editorial notes were very minor and uh and like all of those were really good experiences was the uh, first creator own comic you ever did uh, kinski no, uh, the very first thing that uh, that I did, well, I had a career in comics when I was a lot younger uh, in the early ni- mid 90s. And then I went away and did storyboards for a long time and then came back to comics. And when we came when I came back to comics, uh, my wife, Karina, had written a story uh, that was a, a, a sort of a horror atmospheric horror story called uh, called Heathen Town. Mm-hmm. So actually, the first thing that I did back in comics was a horror thing and uh uh image shadow line published it and uh we basically just you know she had the story and i just drew it and then we showed it to some people and got it published and um so uh that and that was i think that came out in early 2009 and then simultaneous with that i started doing some freelance stuff uh just drawing for marvel just to kind of get back into comics and uh establish myself a little bit so was it Heathen Town that really? I mean, what was it about? Was it the fact that Karina had written a story and needed the artist, or was it there was there always kind of in your storyboarding days this desire to go back to comics? Oh, there's always a desire to go back to comics, and always a desire to uh, to tell stories that I was interested in telling. I mean, uh, you know, as much as it's uh, it's a good career to work in in films, 
these are these are the movies that come along, you know, I mean, and uh, and need somebody at the time. And I may, you know, have a relationship with some director or I may, you know, be able to pick and choose to a certain degree. But um, but the fact is, if you want a job there only and, you know, and you've become available, there's only a certain amount of movies out there. And so you have to take one of them. So you have a job. So you're, you're not always you're often working on something that isn't creatively satisfying or isn't something, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've worked on many movies I've never seen. Uh, and so like it's, you know, uh, I, it is all about. You know, doing the uh, wanting to go back to comics was all about wanting to do something not only that was um, more directly creative, but w- but where people would see my work. If it's, I mean, it's all well and good to talk about, uh, you know, working on these movies and there are, you know, and my boards are in uh, behind the scenes type of books, art of books and, uh, you know, and places online. But uh, but really, that's that's no- nobody is directly experiencing the movie through that. It's it's a kind of you're kind of appreciating it from afar. And, um, you know, with comics, comics are about telling a story. You're, 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 you're reading the story and, and you're only seeing it through the comics. So that's, I mean, it's a, it's a much more satisfying thing to do. Though I do have to say, if I can appreciate from afar, you uh, did the storyboards for, uh, for Logan and that latest trailer is dope as hell. So yeah, well I, yeah. I mean, I spent all last year working on Logan, and I uh, I, I can't talk about anything about the course, content sure, of the movie, yeah. but the um, but it uh, but I really liked working with Jim Mangold. I'd actually worked with him on uh, on a previous uh, a project right before Logan that was almost going to happen, and then was a very like interesting detective movie type of thing that um, was interesting to me and. Uh, um, and, but it went down at the last minute and didn't, didn't quite happen. And then he went on to do Logan. And so I worked with him on that. And I, I, I like working with Jim and I, I put a lot, you know, I put a lot of effort into, uh, into Logan and everybody did. And I, you know, so it, it, it was a good experience. Well, I think in all the, I mean, certainly in Belfry, certainly in, you know, uh, your, your creator own work and certainly in, um, the storyboard, or at least the action sequences derived from, from your storyboards, born from your storyboards, there is a sense of, I mean, especially in Belfry, there is a sense of real consequence to the violence. Like, you do yeah. not, especially with Belfry, again, you do not pull your punches at all. So what is it about, even with fantastical stories involving man and woman bats, I'm not sexist here, um, <laughs> all, all manner of corruptora, but the, uh, what is it about, even in these fantastical settings, kind of rooting it in the real world? It's just important for me that things feel credible and that they have like weight, that they're grounded because I just can't, I don't know. I can't understand anything else than, you know, I, I can't, I can't like find my way into it any other way because it, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, I mean, there are people out there who do amazing, you know, uh, works of, you know, fantasy that are, um, you know, the, that are totally opposite of it. And I think, I mean, a lot, uh, and there's a lot in comics that, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who, who want things that are much more, uh, light and fantastical and, and whimsical. And I don't know that I do that, you know, I mean, I, I can, I can do quirky and light in a certain way. And that's what my Kinski book is apart from the, uh, uh, morally questionable, uh, main character and I'll oh, forget. I said that it's not that light, but, um, the, uh, but like, there. I, uh, you know, I, I think that I have to ground something or I can't find my way into it. I'm not, it's why I'm not so great with the superhero comics. I mean, I, I don't really feel like, um, I mean, there are some things that where the story connects for me and I can do it. And, uh, there are some things like I'm not good at a superhero team book with a hundred different kinds of characters doing a bunch of different kinds of things and, the, and they don't all seem to work together and or fit together. And I like that. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around that. I, I want it. I want it to, to, it to be in a world that makes sense to me. Right. Which is to say, you, can, you know, a little kind of messier, not as well not perfectly assembled and not perfectly escapist. There are like real, again, real consequences. Yeah. And, and, and screwed up around the edges, you know, rough around the edges, you know, like I'd never want things to be too perfect. Now, Gabriel, something we ask everybody that comes on the show, what are you currently geeking out over? Um, I, 
I just uh, picked up. I mean, I I don't think I ever read all of this at at, at any point, but um, I just uh, uh, picked up a copy of like the reprint of of Dave McKeon's book Cages, his his uh, um, sort of uh, crazy creator own sort of opus, and I, I love his art, and I love I love uh, and I um, and I've really been appreciating his uh, his ability to. Um, and you know him from the Sam. you know covers of yeah. of all those sort of Vertigo books from you know the early part of Vertigo and everything, and uh, and like I, I love his ability in especially when he does sort of pen and ink work where you know it can feel very photorealistic and then and then move into very expressive stuff. I love expressive work. I, I mean, some of my favorite comic artists are like. Um, uh, well, I can't think of a great example right now, but the, but <laughs> but people who do like Dave McKean, who do very expressive uh, work, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz, mm. um, you know, I, I I picked up the um, that sort of oversized hardcover of all his New Mutants uh, issues and uh, and like and it's uh, and, and just the energy and excitement of that work is uh, is is very inspiring. Yeah, there is a very kind of like dreamlike quality to it as well where those some of your uh, i mean some artists don't like to talk about influences and i totally understand if if you don't but it was dave mckean or sam keith or any of those guys kind of influences on you that kind of painted surreal kind of art um i don't you know this whole influence thing is tough it's not that i don't like to talk about influences because there are, i have tons of influences and i and and are certainly inspired by a lot of artists um you know, uh, artists and writers, but the, um, but I think that it's, um, but it's a, it's a weird thing because it's none of these are things that I'm sitting there going here, here's a specific thing they do. And I want to put that in my work. I really try to, uh, to kind of shut out, um, any specific influence when I'm working on my stuff and let it kind of be the thing that it's going to be. And, um, and I don't really feel like I, you know, there are people that, uh, that like, um, uh, like Robert Fawcett was a, like a great American illustrator and I, I'm, I love his work and, uh, and I can, I can tell how I'm influenced by his work, but I never sit there and, uh, you know, and specifically cite things and bring those into my work. And like, and in a lot of ways, the, um, the content is separate from the form, like the content and form and style of it are, are totally different things. Like if I have, if there's a story I want to tell and, uh, I, then whatever the imagery is in that story, that's that my job is then to draw that. I don't necessarily for the most part go, here's the imagery I want to draw. I wonder if there's a story that's, that this is, uh, um, I mean, maybe the Belfry is the closest thing to that because I was, you know, uh, I was kind of going off of that, that pinup, but, um, but like, I, I really feel like the, the story is a separate thing and, uh, the demands of the story are, are, are a thing. And, uh, you know, and it's my job to have to draw whatever's in, whatever that story demands, whether I like it or not. Kind of let it, let the story dictate where the, where the art goes and how the art feels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything outside of comics that you're really vibing on, really kind of digging? Um, I, uh, I've, uh, I love movies. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I'm like, I mean, this sort of relates to, uh, um, to the, the Belfry and the horror stuff, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of these movies, uh, from like the early forties, uh, that were produced. They were all produced by this one guy directed and written by different people. This guy, Val Luton at RKO in the, uh, in the early forties, Cat People, I Walk with a Zombie, Seventh Victim. There's like 10 of these movies. And they're really, they're smart and they're atmospheric and they're ostensibly horror movies, but they're very, um, but they have a kind of literacy to them. And uh, the, Val Luton was a guy who had, um, he had he had been a writer. He had been uh, um, a sort of uh underling producer reader for uh, David O. Selznick, who was a big producer at the time. And when he got his shot, 
he went to uh, it was given to him by by a smaller studio who basically gave him a uh, gave him the opportunity to just like they were trying to compete with the universal horror movies and they gave him this slate of movies and were like we don't really care what you do with them you know as long as they have as long as it has the title cat people as long as it has the title I walked with a zombie and the titles are in no way like representative of what the, these movies actually were and he managed to kind of smuggle this uh, the, these kind of very like uh, you know, smart and sometimes delicate and 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 thoughtful movies uh, in into you know into the the world into movie theaters at, at, under the guise of these sort of lurid horror movies, and uh, and it's it's just something that I, I find very inspiring. I think he was kind of like ahead of his time. With I mean, th- those films do have a surreal quality to it, and it's interesting, like Cat People, which I presume is also the inspiration for the david bowie film of the same name but though i guess there yeah. didn't luton do a a sequel to cat people like wrath or something or dance yeah curse of the cat people although it has it it it's sort of a sequel to it it doesn't really have anything to do with it it's the kind of like the story of this little girl and her imaginary friend and it's very tenuously uh connected to the original cat people although like two of the same actors are in it but uh yeah and the the um uh, the the cat people that uh, David Bowie did the song for the the eighties Paul Schrader movie is like it's a it's sort of a remake of uh, of the Luton movie. I mean, it's supposed to be sort of inspired by it, but it uh, but it's very very different. I, I like that movie as well, though. Yeah, I mean that also has kind of a dreamlike quality. So, what is it about between your your favorite artists, your in your own work, and and your and your favorite your the films that you're watching these days? What is it about? Sur- surreality that kind of that you find intriguing i think that it there is a way through uh things that feel that, that are ostensibly surreal to connect with like uh, with with emotions and feelings that you have that you can't quite put your finger on so it doesn't i don't i don't think that surreal stuff uh, um i mean i think that like a director like david lynch is very good when when he's great he's great at being able to present you with something that is seemingly odd or surreal yet often connects in a very in a way that uh, that that you can understand in 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 life like there you it, it it's not like his uh very often things from david lynch movies feel very much like things that happen in real life Although they're bizarre, I, I think there's a way there is a strange bridge between uh, surreal and dreamlike imagery, and uh, and they they can express yourself express themselves in ways that feel very immediate in a uh, in a way that you can't put your finger on. So it's a, an ephemeral thing that you're trying to catch instead of a very direct thing, you know, like it, telling a uh, I I love you know. You know, I, I love espionage stories that are uh, that that are are very tough and realistic, and uh, you know, and 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 the plot mechanics are are tight and uh, suspenseful. But uh, but I think that there's a way that uh, that not you know more less literal stuff can hook into your brain in a in a in a different way that is just as relatable as realistic stuff well it's kind of like it's almost like dreams like sometimes dreams can feel as as true as as everyday life but there's always something off and i think that and in surreal surreal work like say david lynch's work just that sense of it being like watching blue velvet or or whatever that idea of something being off is the thing that that makes the questions arise it makes you evaluate your surroundings or evaluate the piece of art yeah i um, think that's right so since you invoked lynch i got to know because it's supposed to come back twin peaks fan i'm a i'm a painfully huge twin twin peaks fan i'm like an obsessive twin peaks fan i i i, I saw um uh, when when i was 16 when when twin peaks uh first aired and i and i saw the uh the pilot like just by myself sitting in my room uh, and, uh, and it had a, such a huge impact on me. And, uh, so like it, that, that it is one of those things that, uh, that I am, I'm a, a huge fan of, and it really, uh, you know, and too big of a fan of, and very obsessive about, I'm very excited about, uh, about the new Twin Peaks, but very much, 
I mean, but just as much because it's a new David Lynch thing, and and I'm 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 interested in whatever he's he's interested in doing. I'm trying to think, what's the last thing David Lynch did? Guest star on Louis for those like? Couple <laughs> well, yeah, episodes? probably. Yeah, <laughs> make but, me I mean, laugh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Funny man. Those episodes were yeah. great. Oh, that's, that's so funny. I'll just pull up the YouTube oh. clip of that stuff every so often and just watch it. Oh, so good. Who knew that he was so funny? Oh, oh you didn't get that impression watching Mulholland Drive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. His character from Twin Peaks is a pretty funny guy. The, oh, the, yeah. The, the, the guy that can't hear, even though he yeah. has the hearing aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, Firewalk with me as well. Yeah. Uh, it's hilarious! Well, a romp, <laughs> a romp. <laughs> There's some darkly comic moments in the fire. There are, there yeah. are. And my favorite David Lynch thing ever is The Elephant Man. Mm. I think that's that's one of the most just. Well, that that is the classy, elegant choice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I well, here, here's the thing. I got to be real. Be safe, Jake. Yeah. God. Well, no, I got to be real because it was Eraserhead is his like uh, you know his thing, right? My buddy played that for me once, and it almost ended our friendship. Like I. <laughs> It, I swear, I, when the movie ended, I thought it was two and a half hours, and I was just like, what is this thing? Um, and then I saw Elephant Man, and I was like, how is that the same person? And then, um, this is really going nowhere, but my favorite thing about <laughs> the uh, 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 Eraserhead thing is, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb that you probably haven't seen Gilmore Girls, but they're, one of my favorite things of all time is there is a nod, they keep having a re- reoccurring nod to like David Lynch films in Gilmore Girls, and that's probably the closest I've come to like accepting Eraserhead is the any the little nods in there because Eraserhead like it, it it it's too much for me that that's too much. It, is it? I love Eraserhead. It's brilliant, <laughs> and it's, it's like I you here's the thing you got to watch it like ten more times. Yeah, I know, I know. And, <laughs> no, you don't really, but I just deliver one fortune. But like the uh, the Eraserhead is like for all of its difficultness and uh you know and obscurity like has some of like the greatest gags in it i mean there there are are there's a moment in eraser head where uh you know henry the guy with the tall hair his yeah. uh, his wife leaves him uh and he finds this out by her by like some her just standing at the bottom of the bed and just like pulling on something endlessly and shaking the bed and it's it, it seems like this horrible disturbing moment until she finally just pulls loose the suitcase and you realize oh she's leaving she just <laughs> she was just getting her suitcase out from under the bed and like the the setup and payoff of that is just a great gag yeah no i i, I remember seeing the um what the 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 child thing um and uh, when uh, I'm sorry, it's just it's just movie so much. It, it, like I, you know, I remember when they when you know spoilers for Eraserhead. When I is there spoilers for Eraserhead? But when they when they cut open the that thing's that stuck with me forever and ever. Well, the, it, it wasn't supposed to be pleasant. Well, no, no, I know, I know. I'm saying like that that goal accomplished. Baby, that's not that's that's not an upbeat moment. No, no, no. Goal accomplished, David Lynch. But like the the yeah that I mean. You're right. I mean, the stuff in there, like, I remember just moments and, you know, and just, you know, the the imagery of things and, like, flying heads and stuff. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, that that would probably make sense now that the Elephant Man is my favorite because that is probably the most, like, easy to digest <laughs> David Lynch movie. Um, well, it has very polite British actors in it. It so does. Polite. It does. It's, like, the exact opposite of... Uh, <laughs> of Hannibal Lecter, right? It's like, you know, he's like the, you know, uh, Anthony Hopkins is like the nicest person <laughs> in that movie, uh, yes. which is, I think what got him the role for, for Silence of the Lambs. He's just like, let's go the exact opposite with that character. Still but, classy uh, though. Still drinks Chianti. He is a classy <laughs> cannibal. Indeed. <laughs> he's the classiest cannibal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's certainly not those cannibal Holocaust bastards. Mm. You've been listening to talking Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> We should make that a series. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, um, well, Gabriel, is there, uh, before we let you go, is there anything else you, you want to plug other than, the, you know, the re- ongoing adventures of the Invisible Republic and, and uh, Belfry again out in comic shops everywhere on February 22nd? I think, well, and uh, and the uh, final order cutoff is uh, is January 30th. So uh, if so, if you uh, if you'd like to uh, ask your retailer to uh, order you a copy, that would be very much appreciated. Yeah. Would, by then, um, I the invisible republic and uh belfry are the main things that i've got uh i um 
we Karina and I are working on a freelance project for uh, for a big two comic book publisher, one of two. Uh, and uh, uh, so we're gonna uh, we're, we're working on that right now, but it's not announced, so we can't really talk about it, but it's common. Fair enough. <laughs> That's <laughs> Look, exciting, though. Point, I don't know. What do you want from me? <laughs> more more the world. Yeah, more yeah. David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, I'll just keep fucking talking about David Lynch. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just Skype you in every episode that we do uh, on the David Lynch podcast that we're inevitably going to start. Well, no, I'm going to, I'm going to start. The next podcast I'm going to do is I'm going to watch Eraserhead <laughs> for like a week straight and yeah. see see where that goes. Let that, You're going let, to record an episode after each viewing yes. so yeah. you can update us on how you feel let about Let that it. film just beat you into beautiful submissions. Yes. Yes. For the celluloid fist. The woman mm. singing behind the heater. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a radiator. The radiator. Oh. Damn it. See, it's been too long since I've seen that movie. I so. don't even know what you're talking about. I don't. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. You're just an impressionable youth. Wow. I am. I saw it. I, it was very impressionable. I, it was too much for me to handle. <laughs> I should have watched Elephant Man first. <laughs> <laughs> Ease into it. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, watch all the episodes of, of Twin Peaks backwards. I got them on LaserDisc. Yeah. You want to borrow them? Yeah. <laughs> All think, of them on Laserdisc? Yeah. Do you even have Firewalk with me on Laserdisc? That is not an episode. Well, it's and a film, no, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have that on DVD. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, Gabriel, uh, thanks again for coming on the show. And again, the uh, the uh, Belfry is out in comic book shops everywhere on Wednesday, February 22nd. Retailers, January 30th is the final order cutoff date. Gabriel, thanks again for coming on. Oh, thank you. It's always wild, like, one, the people we get on the show. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, the guy that storyboarded, like, Inception and mm -hmm. Dark Knight Rises Ooh. and Logan and, and uh, Interstellar. Um, and it's also interesting what tangents we go on yes. with those people. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I tweeted him after that, and I was like, hey, man, I will watch Eraserhead one of these days. <laughs> I promise. Because, like, I didn't want it to feel like I was, like, jumping on him for it. I'm just curious. I'm always curious because it's one of those movies that you fall on, like, you love it or you hate it. Like... It's and and I you know he's talking about being a big D David Lynch fan and uh, so yes that was a that was a fun conversation about <laughs> <laughs> about Eraserhead because you know that movie that movie yeah 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 uh, yeah so again the Belfry out in comic book shops everywhere Wednesday February twenty second um, Ken welcome aboard oh thanks man yeah I yeah, feel I like this is your this is, is this your first time on an installment of Catching Up the I think I've been in the, he's, he's been he, in the studio before he's I've been in the sat studio. He, was it during the uh, Revenge of the Sith? It was a commentary. Yeah, you yeah. sat here for a commentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just sorting through comics and then oh, like boy. stifling my laughter in the background. That's right. That's right. You brought over. Yeah, that's right. A bunch of spider hear a stuff. Damn thing. I made it. No, I think it was Mission Impossible Two. Oh, it was. It was. It was Mission Impossible. Oh, and then too. an interview. I, w I was in an interview that uh, you guys had. I forget which one though. Well, I mean, the Mission Impossible stuff was the beginning of last summer. Yeah, because we were doing it for. No, it was a while ago because we were doing it for Rogue Nation. <laughs> 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 Um, and we and we were recording well in advance that too. Movie's yeah. On, yeah. That movie's at the point where it's like on sale on Vudu now. That's yeah. how long it's been out. Um, good God, yeah, it'll be two years this summer. Fuck, yeah. where'd the time go? Who knows, man? Um, we're adults now. We're older. I have facial hair. Now. Yeah, yeah. I'm in my thirties. Finally got my pubes, guys. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Nice, nice. Let me know what that's like. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, but you guys getting anything? I mean, there's a couple trailers. Speaking of like Gabriel Hardman, that Ooh, you know came out. Mm. You know Logan. Lo Logan being the one that is appropriate to to Gabriel. Mm -hmm. um, seeing that he again storyboarded that one, but uh, yeah, that, I mean it looks pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, I we mean, might we might finally get a Wolverine solo movie. That's uh, you a know Wolverine solo movie. Yeah, Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be good, man, because you know Hugh Jackman deserves a a, a, a hero send off. Yeah, yeah. I know, like the whole uh, most interesting man in the world look he's rocking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put on his Sunday best <laughs> to fight the apocalypse. Most interesting whatever. mutant in the world. Yeah, <laughs> although the trailer, you know, looks like he does rock. You know, goes goes back to Wolver the Wolverine look. You know whether that's in the beginning or a flashback or whatever, but you you see the Wolverine chops mm. and and mm. the shaved uh, chin, at least. Oh, I must have missed that then. I just remember the uh, tank top bit. Yeah, he's got the tank top and he's got the he's shaved. Okay. You know he's got the you know chops on. Okay, you know? but uh, no, you know you you know it's I don't think it was a necessarily a a shocking reveal, but you get to mm. see X twenty three's claws pop in yeah. this. Yeah, kick a lot more ass. You know, get a little uh you know uh, duo adamantium action going on yeah i mean i'm i'm excited because like the unfortunately like the most exposure that i've had of the two of them together outside of like let's say ultimate marvel vs capcom 
was uh, X Men Evolutions, mm-hmm. and that uh, felt like a different version of her because this is definitely a younger version of her. Yeah, you get a little bit a bit better like. Uh, You've seen that with a lot of apocalyptic future games where, like, the older man and the younger girl. Yeah, it's very, like, kind of Lone Wolf and Cub or yeah. The Road or The Last of Us. Yeah. You know, there's a, a lot of... I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. And yeah. if it, and if it, you know, from what we've seen, the trailer seems to really hold on to that mm. family vibe or yeah. that protector vibe. And I, I've always liked in Wolverine, like does that you know mm. the first x-men does that with rogue yeah you know big animated time. series does it with jubilee mm-hmm. yep yeah mm. so yeah there's well. a lot of the uh, pride of the x-men does it with kitty pride mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess the mm-hmm. x-men comics too at the time yeah but mm-hmm. that you know the gruff i don't want to be the hero Father figure the other figure but, but I, I guess yeah, i yeah. guess i'll do it yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so it's Here cool. we go again <laughs> yeah <laughs> again <laughs> but yeah no it's it's looking pretty good what do you guys think of the power rangers trip oh boy <laughs> this is why i'm here <laughs> that's right Oh god. No, like uh well here's that you don't that don't know, Ken is like the resident Power Rangers expert. I got it. There might suit. be a, uh, an episode of Laser Dicks that gets that they talk about. It. I think we do for like <laughs> multiple <laughs> ones. <laughs> I think every like every other episode I'll be like, "So I was eyeing some more Power Rangers laser discs <laughs> the other day." Cuz I think in total I own the, both movies that came out here in the US. Sure. And uh a Singapore laser disc of right when they made the swap to the secondary cast. Right. Um. So yeah, I've I've got I I, I got a red suit. Oh <laughs> fuck yeah! Red, the, he's my favorite. And dude, and the, he red, made his own Megazord. Too. No, I did not. No, no? I did not. I oh. purchased that off of Amazon. Oh, Never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, Has yeah. a Megazord suit, dude. Yeah. Their outfits in the movie, like mm-hmm. the first movie, I fucking love their outfits in the first movie. It's, Those are the super shiny ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like a little upgrade. Yeah, it's still like the classic like yeah, triangle, and they have the they have, like, armor. Yeah, yeah, but it looks more armor. It's built up. like that was. You know, there's some design choices that they chose, but I felt like there was an extension of this show. Yeah. Of, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, like we have money. We have money. That was their we have money now. We have yeah. money now. Exactly. And they went just want to do all original footage. But uh, fun things about that, though, they still, while it's not in continuity, they still per- borrowed Zords that they were going to use in the following year. Mm. Like, uh, I know it's the head's a little different, but the, like the Falcon, uh, all the add on Zords, they go ahead and just use that later on the show when they start doing ninja stuff. Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to stop nerding out about Power No, I mean, like, the, the trailer was cool, man. Like, yeah. I, I, I d- wasn't a fan of the first trailer, you know? Um, mostly because it was just, like, the teenagers being teenagers, yeah. which is fine. I mean, again, another another point where I'm like, I'm old now, is, like, this is not made for me. This Power Rangers yeah. movie is not made for me. You know, granted, we are the generation that was, like, the target audience for the, right. the original Power Rangers. Right. Like, I, when I watched this trailer, when they finally, you know, you know morph out and, and wear their shit and kick ass... It kind of for a moment brought me back to like watching it for the first time mm-hmm. in 1993 what, three was when yeah. it yeah, came when out. Yeah, it came out. Yeah, and I remember going. It was like a, that Saturday. I remember going to school that following week, and it was like, it was like the Beatles and the Ed Sullivan show. Like we were like, yeah. you, can you believe this shit? Yeah, the, can you believe this? It? Like yeah. just this big headed freak of me walking in third, going, can you believe it? <laughs> third um, third grade <laughs> Jake Bozik goes into school. Can you believe can this you believe shit? This, shit? <laughs> this hype. Um, well, but this back, fucking show. Well, because back then you didn't have like it was kind of violent, but it wasn't like graphic. Well, like, I remember like we would all play on the playground. We'd all yeah. you know it was basically kind of like Ninja Turtles, kind yeah. of like the fact where whichever one, whatever color is your favorite color, would yeah. usually coincide. You know, but, but that was your favorite one. So I was favorite Jason, whatever. And then you know once the agreement Tommy showed up, it was like the fucking soap opera, and oh, uh, everyone goodness. wanted to be Tommy, and I was yeah. like. Whatever. But I remember, like, we would all do that thing at the Power Rangers. You'd run one by one, get your mm-hmm. ass kicked by an like, imaginary foe, yeah. fly back, sparks going everywhere, and then you team up, and then you go do your thing or whatever. <laughs> um, that was my favorite shit. Like, they get yeah. hit and sparks go flying. Yeah. But uh, I've just been punched, but yeah. all of a sudden there's explosions. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. But, um, and then I remember, like, the hunt for trying to get the toys. Like, yeah. that was yeah. huge. And when I finally got the, the, the you know, click the their Mormon belt and their head flipper, flip. Yeah. Oh, uh, and yeah, I was talking to oh. I was talking to Ken off mic about it. I passed by the the Red Ranger, like the new ones, you yeah. know. And I was like, man, look how easy th- these are to get now. But I was like, I almost wanted to buy one just to be like, now I have money. Yeah, it's I can buy it I'm just to have adult. it, you well, know, have it next to my original Red Ranger one from well, back in the, the day. That's the whole point about like the leg- legacy series. Like mm-hmm. I have a legacy like um, Dragon Zords, which is basically, hey, we got the original toys. Uh, writes the original toys let's update them with better joints and they look the same but mm-hmm. they're better designed i've got a black and gold dinosaur next to my television it nice. looks fucking fantastic nice. uh yeah that's right i'll touch them <laughs> <laughs> touch my nipples there we go let's let's clarify um no but, need 
<laughs> but uh, but yeah. So but for this particular roundabout with like uh, the suits look fint. I think the suits look great because here at the end of the day, people have complaints about the designs, mm-hmm. about like the Zordon Alpha, the suits, and the, like the the command center. At the end of the day, they're pitching this as an alien race. Like Zordon and Alpha are not from Earth. Mm-hmm. Granted, they weren't from the original one, but I mean, you can only do so much with like nineties to nineties uh, props and stuff. But now they're pitching them as this is a spaceship. It crash landed. This is not Earth, so it's going to look weird. I mean, I'm not a super big fan of like the gut on Alpha Five, but yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe he'll be funny. I mean, yeah. it's Bill Hader, and and, and oh, I it do, is. It's yeah. Bill Hader. Oh, fuck yeah! And I do like the suits. Like the suits yeah. are very reminiscent of like the Giver, which yeah. was oh, badass. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the Giver, <laughs> dude, the With fucking Giver. <laughs> Oh, oh my man. god! I remember uh, <laughs> Sam and I were walking around San Diego the first year we went, and they have like you know like the big prop stuff. Yeah. I don't remember what the the booth is, but it's you know amazing, cool sci fi props. Mm. And we had our like you know uh, an hour to walk around or whatever. Yeah. And we passed by, and they had all these busts like uh, you know from different movies, and they had the Giver bust. And I was like, the Giver. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a selfie. I, it's not on my phone. I, it's on Facebook somewhere of me making just the stupidest shocked look <laughs> as I got a selfie with the Giver. <laughs> Oh my god! I, lo- I love the Giver stuff. Oh, oh it's, man. yeah, but yeah, that is true. I mean, like you know, it's very Iron Man esque, robotic esque. Um, uh, th- you know, there's a couple shots that lo- the suits look really good in, yeah. in the trailer. You know, now that we can see them like in action. Yeah, yeah, I think they look cool. And I, you know, I'm going f- to see this movie solely for yeah. seeing them kick ass. And the moments they saw, I think it's the Blue Ranger who does like the triple, yeah. like karate kick. It actually, looks like I mean, you know, I don't know shit about karate, but like it looks badass. Yeah. Um, you know, like the Black Panther triple kick. Oh the, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, Civil War. But like, uh, and then there's the uh, you know, the shot of uh, Jason saving somebody, like reaching into the rubble to pull him out. You know, I've got come with me yeah, if you want with, to live. Yeah. But I mean, like, like if they, if they, you you know, hone in a little shit like that, like showing them like save the day. Like that's yeah. cool, man. You know, yeah. and uh, the moment where you know they fucking all come together and, mm-hmm. and 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 it stands up and it looks like something out of you know an old. I I hope I I I'm still waiting for an Ultraman movie. You know, like that's what I want to see. God, yeah. Um, well, no, the, you need to go see the Ultraman like Japanese stuff with me. Like when it comes to the album, yeah, man. Because like they've got. I know there was wasn't there one recently. Was there one recently, or am I oh, thinking it's, some, it it's sometime this month? I oh, don't yeah. remember when. It's gonna be tough for me to it do might it, have but I definitely passed. I probably to, already passed. Yeah, oh. but if there's one like in the future, it'd be yeah. easy for me to get off work to go see it because yeah. I, I the reason I kept my Who subscription for the lo- the longest time I did was because they had the original Ultraman on there. Oh god! Uh, and uh, you know, but you know, that's something where like I, I say I like Ultraman, and I do. I have some really cool figures of Ultraman and stuff, mm. but you know, I am like point zero five percent knowledge of that world because it's so huge. You know, it it's, is. It's, it it's is. monstrous. There's like years of Japanese tokons, uh, to- tokusetsu. I almost said pork. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure about. there's plenty. Yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> there, I'm plenty. I'm sure there's plenty of pork too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it, there's years of that stuff. I mean, we got a taste with like I watched the original Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there's the whole film genre subculture that, like, I want to get into. I want him to show up in the King Kong Godzilla <laughs> multiverse, you know, the, uh, the shared universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be so cool. But, like, uh, have you? did you read any of the uh, updated manga stuff? Like, the sequel to the original? I have them if you want to borrow them. Oh, they, right. they did Ultraman. And his suit looks very Guyver Power Ranger, you okay. know, the new Power Ranger S. Yeah. Because it is a sequel to the original okay. uh, Ultraman. So, like, it's his son becomes the next uh, Ultraman. Well, and it's, like, like, super violent. Like, yeah. it's awesome. No, no, it's crazy, because, like, I saw the trailer for the ones, I think it was, like, Ultraman X that they mm-hmm. were showing at the Alamo, and, like, Japan has this concept of doing a- adaptations for its older works, and to do it the super stylized mm-hmm. way, like... Uh, my initial argument when pe- when I saw like the teaser, I think when I saw the teaser and somebody was giving me all these arguments, what did you think? What did you think? Because everyone's going to direct that toward me. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- when I was like, hey, I know I did. Yeah, you know, yeah. But uh, what I told people is that even though like you have this negative view of it, like it's still going to be fun because like take a look at this. Like they took this old eighties cartoon. Um, it was the, I think the example that I gave was uh, Casern. And it's cheesy. It's stop, like kind of kind of little stop and go type of action. But then they translate it in this like Matrix style like CG camera rig, like ridiculous, like him versus a thousand robots at once. Mm-hmm. Like I'd have to just show you the, the 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 like this clip. Just that it's this level of ridiculous that they add to Japanese films that makes it worth it to see these properties in like a modern like. It, it's just. It's amazing. So I can't really complain when they mm-hmm. have like some interesting decisions because some people don't like that crazy stuff. But yeah. 
you got to make it fresh. Yeah, I mean, who knows, man? Like, you know, Godzilla did pretty well. They're obviously making God, a, yeah. a universe with that. The Kong trailer looks really cool. Like, I've never been like a big Kong guy. I was never mm. a big Godzilla guy, but the yeah. new trailer looks pretty cool. Yeah, uh, new. Yeah, new uh, if there's any question about like King Kong being a kaiju, oh, watch oh. the Skull Island. Trailer. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 That, I mean that that trailer looks fucking awesome. Like it, like the. Uh, you know, it's got a really solid cast too. So, like I said, you know, bring on, bring on Ultraman, dude. Because like, yeah. yeah, like Power Rangers kind of has some of that yeah. aspect, and then you got the the Jack kaiju Jack stuff, which yeah. is just, he just fucking Jack oh yeah, <laughs> Yo, we're bringing him too. Who yeah. fucking cares, He's man? Basically, just, Ultraman yeah. and Pepsi Man. Yeah. Oh, Pepsi God. Man. Could you imagine like <laughs> Ultraman's like dun, 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 Ultraman dun. is and Jet Dragar? It's like Ultraman and Jet Dragar versus Godzilla and yeah. King Kong. Yeah. And you just hear you hear in the distance Pepsi Man. And he's just running on the bottom, just runs across. They all stop. I go back into a fucking <laughs> crunch and crunch. Dude, I, you know, just just for you, I'm gonna get a Pepsi Man Zentai suit. Do it. And then we, remember we look. We, oh, we look it's five dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not that expensive. Yeah. yeah, I'll do it. I'll find an Ultraman or like other like suit people. Dude, yeah. you guys should yeah. be the Legion of Pepsi Man. Yes, yes. Oh, and just run, awesome run through. Yeah. Just yeah. have Pepsi's like in our, in our arms. because because I'm hefty. I should be Diet Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh you can I be will Pepsi, be. You can be Cherry Pepsi. Uh, I'll be Coke Zero. Coke Zero, <laughs> yeah. dude. Coke Zero sounds like the villain. Yeah. Like Coke yeah. Zero. Yeah. Get like an yeah. eye patch and shit. Oh my god, it's Coke uh, the, Zero. The, the, the super reflective uh, glasses. Oh my god. Oh, uh, <laughs> we got it. We got it. We just get run throughout the con. Yeah. Fl- Pepsi uh, Man. Dun, dun, dun. Next time we see Trad Moore. Oh yeah, didn't <laughs> we talk to him about Pepsi Man? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, props to Trad Moore because he is what. Reignited, he Manchurian candidate my head <laughs> when uh, he drew a Ultraman uh, when I was going through his Deviant art, which I'll show you after this. It's fucking unreal. Yeah, but I remember seeing that. I had not thought about Ultraman t- since I was a little kid. Mm. Now, something was Deviant art, Deviant art a couple years ago, and that popped up of him doing another you know, pose yeah. in front of a big Japanese flag oh, that I think man. he like uh, did as a donation or as a as a uh, for uh, the earthquake for the earthquake you know okay. he's like you know Japan's greatest fictional hero whatever. Yeah. Yeah. and I remember I, it shot me back and I was like oh my god I, I totally for, I remember this character you know mm. this Ultraman guy and that was looking up and then like I said at the time luckily Hulu I don't know if they still do because I don't have Hulu anymore sorry but they had <laughs> they had all of you know the original Ultraman on there which oh, is man. so fucking fun man like yeah. it just you know the you know just it's so fun, just the ridiculous rubber suits and throwing people into buildings. And oh my god! Which all is, different kaiju. Here's what I'm going to recommend you do. A, I'm going to I'm recommending this, Chris, too. Check out the old uh, Car Ranger, which is basically what they the footage they took to make to Power Rangers Turbo. Mm-hmm. It is if you like cheesy, if you like old stuff, like they took the concept of like a Sentai show, like the Five Ranger team, and just went with it and made it fun. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take itself seriously. They work at an auto shop <laughs> fixing cars. Is that the one with the Pepsi episode? Or the uh, pizza episode? Yes. Okay. It's Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they literally... the Pepsi <laughs> To bring it around circle. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, they you literally have totally an episode... fight the Power Rangers while yeah. we're the Pepsi men. I mean, I'll have my Megazord suit. I'll let you... I'll let somebody borrow it. We'll have our own kaiju battle. Dude, we should do that. We should do that because, you know, you would do the you would rock the Power Rangers yeah. shit, I'm assuming. Uh, I If I could find... I mean, it's probably expensive as shit, but I would love to rock an Ultraman shit. I mean, um, if you find a Zentai, it's probably not. Yeah, but the helmet, I feel like, would be, like, more expensive, you, right? You could get, like, a skin-tight one and then, like, make, like, a piece to go on top. That's like, true, that's true. Like, the, like, my Spider-Man doesn't look too bad skin-tight, so that's you true. could just get a piece on it. That's true. Skin-tight. Do you have, do you have old-school people you'd be? Zentai people you'd be? Uh, like, <laughs> like, comfortable with their bodies? Ultraman-esque? Um, Jet Jaguar? I, I'd, Jet have to, I'd have to think about it. Oh man, <laughs> but uh, oh, but to bring it full circle though, so the, what I also was going to mention just be like King Kong or Godzilla. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to something you also should look up is that the director of Godzilla, the modern day Godzilla that we all saw together, Gareth Edwards. Uh, no, no, the uh, the Japanese one we saw. Oh, uh, oh Shin I didn't, Godzilla. I didn't, uh, I didn't yeah, Shin Godzilla. Uh, Hideki Anno. He. <laughs> oh crap! Sorry, uh, but uh, he, uh, the director of it, actually grew up in college. Made his own Ultraman, like the Return of Ultraman, like uh-huh. short. They didn't have suits; they had a jacket. And then, oh, they ha- I think you told me about that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I have to, I have to watch that. He's I remember the guy that did Ev- uh, Evangelion, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Just to like, put it in context for everyone. Exactly, else. like that was his college, like senior project was to make Ultraman because, like, cool. uh, it's it's cheesy, it's fun. They made their own special effects, like scratched on the screen. Like, is he still like king shit in Japan? Yeah, well, he just did Godzilla, so like he's going back to Ava. Like, he's still. 
still, you know, the king of the. He's the king of the world in terms of animation. They're, they're currently so doing the, some new Ava thing, yeah, right? Or yeah. Well, I mean, also like, is is Ultraman still king shit over there? Or is well, he they're not still as, doing movies. Yeah, they're still doing movies. Like Ultraman X is still a recent movie. Okay, it's got that the white. It's white screen. I think I saw the trailer for that because I was like yeah. one day I was like looking through. The, I'm sure you've seen it too. Yeah. I think we watched it here once. That like CG Ultraman. Did you ever see that? Where like it's. Uh, they're like it's the new Ultraman movie, and I think it's oh, just I think it's the trailer that we saw. Yeah, 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 where it's just like like big CG Ultraman, yeah. and he gets like kicked into a building, and you know that was pretty cool. Yeah, no, no, that, that well, that's that style, that's mm-hmm. that modern Japanese cinema that I was talking about. That yeah. just like CG everything, but mm-hmm. it looks it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Wow, we got off really well on a huge tangent. That's what know. we do. Yeah, I don't know if you've listened. <laughs> yeah. I've, lis- I've listened to like a lot of the interviews yeah. and a lot of the catch- <laughs> and, and a lot of catching up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, now they're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck these guys! Yeah. I have to listen to them when I hang out with them. <laughs> <laughs> I, get the first I feel clip. like I feel like that's most of how our listenership goes. Uh, you know, but um. I have to. So, how did you get into Highlander again, Jake? Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the whole fucking thing. So, uh, uh, how did this get, how did this get made? Did uh, Highlander two the quickening yes. recently? The return of uh, of uh, Connery. Yeah. yeah, even though he's dead. Even though yeah, he's <laughs> dead. Electric and um, uh, but supposedely him and uh, Lambert uh, became such good buddies. He was like, I'm only doing two if Connery comes yeah. back. They're like, all right, fine. Fuck, it's Sean Connery, of course. <laughs> um, but. I was I was watching you know I hadn't I've never seen two right and uh, I've barely seen one and you know th- th- it sounds like such like I, you know I've listened to enough how did this get made but they sounded truly yeah truly dumbfounded by this yeah. movie I I when I was working at Blockbuster I decided to watch all the Highlander oh, movies see that's why like, Blockbuster was king it they was. had all the Highlander yeah. movies <laughs> yeah and listening to that episode of how did this get made I'm like. Did I watch? Well, I remember that you movie? tweeting about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I was like, I, I have to do this fucking, you know, because sometimes if most of the time if I've never seen the movie, sometimes I'm weary to listen to the episode because I was like, I'm not going to get it, mm-hmm. whatever. But I was like, do I like Highlander? Like, I, you know, do I like that movie? I don't know. I like the Queen, you know, Princess of the Universe. Like, it's one of the fucking greatest opening things of all time. Yeah, and the, you know, the broadswords clanging and the sparks flying and and the idea of it's kind of cool. Like, you know, but um, so I was looking up Highlander last night after I listened to the episode and. The posters came up on you know Google Images, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> Let me read you all the um, the fucking uh, tagline for this shit. Because do yourself a favor and just look up the posters. Just type in Highlander poster, and there's one in particular that's going to come up. That is like also if they make a uh, uh, like a modern day version of it, just cast Thomas Jane because yeah. Thomas Jane looks <laughs> oh, a lot like Lambert, and, but it's Thomas fucking Jane. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so the just show you guys again, and like I said, Google image yeah. it yourself. Yeah. So but it's like a black. It's and just white. a close up. It looks like he's burned by acid. Ah. Black and white thing. Just Highlander. Kind of looks like a mugshot. Yeah, yeah. And it has the tagline that says, "He fought his first battle on the Scottish Highlands, Highlands in 1536." He will fight his greatest battle on the streets of New York City in 1986. His name is Connor McLeod. He is immortal. And then there's other there's other posters where he's just screaming. Um, there's one poster where I'm pretty sure it's not even the main character. It's just one of the other characters screaming. And there's a car in the background to let you know it's present day. Yeah. Um, it's just... So, yeah, I was like, well, now I kind of, like want to watch the first one to watch the second one although i've heard you don't need to watch i mean mm. what's his face uh uh jason uh, manzuk has never seen the first one yeah mm. and but he was just as lost as everyone else the, the main reason i wanted to rewatch him watch the rewatch the first one because i own that mm. is there are experts in the crowd throughout the taping of the episode yeah okay. that poster yeah that's 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 Lambert. Oh, that's yeah. Well, no, I mean, there's actually. there's other posters, oh, oh, but where it looks like a totally different person, kind of like the Mad Max posters. Clearly, they hadn't cast Mad Max yet. Right. Oh, okay. Um, but they're like they're like oh, Highlander. This one? Yeah, they're like <laughs> Highlander experts, and I'm like, yeah, I want to fucking, I want to be an expert of Highlander. I, I mean, don't. There are people that are like, I've run into some hard fucking Highlander Highlander fans, dude. I want to hang out with them. Like, I want to <laughs> sit in a room and just pick their brain. I want to get them all together. Because one thing I found out today was that the tagline "There can be only one" mm-hmm. is not referencing "There can be only one Highlander." No, mm-hmm. it's "There can only be one immortal." Yeah, oh. yeah. And he's, so that's he's something. only called a Highlander because he is the Highlands, Scottish, Scottish, yeah, Scottish, a Scottish Highlander. He's yeah. he's from the Highlands yeah. of Scotland. Highlander is not a term yeah. for everybody yeah. who's immortal. It's just him. Yeah. Had it been following uh, Sean Connery's character, it would have been the Egyptian Spaniard. Yeah, <laughs> but. 
like so yeah so a lot of these guys were like schooling the fucking how did this get made people and they were fucking hilarious so it was like how dare you sir because <laughs> the guy's like um first of all he's egyptian um oh my god but uh you know they do um, it all actually all funny but so yeah. i was like i have to watch so i feel like that would have been like i, I kind of wish you had it on laser disc i am i'm two seconds away from buying because i kind of feel like that's that's a perfect i i looked them up on on ebay there's a there's a two set of uh-huh. highlander and highlander 2 uh for eight dollars uh-huh. plus like five dollars shipping oh that's a which great, was great deal. The, which yeah which not only one was the cheapest of any of those bids, but it was the only one that had both of them. So yeah. I was like, uh, either I'm going to spend fifteen dollars on just the first one, yeah. or I'm going to spend like fifteen. Because also, on both I honestly them. can't remember if I like. I remember not liking the first time like, yeah. when I watched it. I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, but I've heard the Queen music. Why did I buy this? Mm. Like I already have the Queen music. You know, like I said, there's some okay weird things, and it's one of those movies that like I don't think it made its money back when it came out, Aww. but like it's one of those like cult classics now. Yes, like I mean, it got a fucking sequel where it got like five. Yeah, sequels. and a, a TV spinoff, and in the first sequel he has to fix the ozone layer because yeah. yeah. it kills his wife oh what? yeah 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 and uh i've never heard of the, i've heard of the term highland i don't think i've actually sat down and but like supposedly that. there's a new comic right, series you know coming what? out i'm buying it all right <laughs> and we're all gonna watch it yeah supposedly there's a new comic series that's coming out it's your like, birthday party this year? <laughs> oh that, dude wait that we, we all watch dark to... man Ooh. Oh yeah, because I do have Dark, Dark Man Man's and Dark Man like, too. Shit. You're welcome. I love that stuff. Yeah. But like, the difference is like Dark Man. I'm like, okay, it's, yeah. It's we'll all Dark we'll all have to show up for. It'll just be a trench coat <laughs> marathon of Dark Man and Highlander because we just wear big trench coats. Have just get rid of my like head. weird French accents. <laughs> uh huh. Um, and carry giant broadswords. <laughs> Supposedly, in the How Did This Get Made? You know, uh, Paul Shear does his research. You know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Lambert like fucked himself up because yeah. he didn't want to use fake swords mm-hmm. and so the first thing he did was um slice, slice his finger down to the bone yeah. uh michael uh no who the uh, ironside, ironside yeah. Too, yeah he uh cuts off a chunk of uh lambert's thumb and then lambert i think almost got a tooth knocked out or right. shoulder he dislocated chips, he chips uh he chips ironside uh, ironside's teeth ah, yeah. and they s- kept using broadswords <laughs> Uh, and it doesn't seem like a bad. Supposedly idea. They, they did the thing that uh, they also did in Star Wars that Mark Hamill says wearing the 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 wire up the sleeve to keep it you know looking all you know lightsabery was yeah. that they would have a a current like running up through their arms so when the swords hit they'd spark wow. to give like you know I feel like that's like the main thing people remember like yo the fucking swords man <laughs> <Yeah>. they spark. <laughs> Not the fact that he has to solve the ozone layer problem mm. in Highlander Two. Well, also the, the quickening. The second one was well, like it's like four different I, movies that w- were put together and never quite finished. I will mm. say uh, the one thing I do remember about watching Highlander Two is being just completely flummoxed, <laughs> <laughs> flabbergasted, and Awestruck. confused. Yeah, they do <laughs> ask about uh, Sean Connery's character being back. I'm like, but he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> they do ask uh, what's That's her not face. A surprise either. I think he's on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> They do ask what's her face. They're like, "Do you understand better now what a street fighter is <laughs> or a Highlander?" And she's because like, she "A Highlander." Because she had no idea. Oh, the what street, a street fighter. Fi- the street was. fighter is still one of the greatest moments yeah. in, in what how this is history. A street fighter. Yeah. What is it's based street? on a video game? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and what is BB-8's mission? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is its mission? Yeah, she's great. Uh, June Di- June, Di- June, Di- June Diane Rayfield. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Well, you guys got anything else to add? I mean. Did you guys have a, uh, well, you didn't go, but Chris, did you ever talk about uh, your MAGFest experiences? Yeah, no, yeah, no. I talked about it a little bit. I mean, okay. I, d- I was just there for uh, just a day oh, and okay. walked around, played, you know, checked out some games, <laughs> oh, saw okay. some people that I know. But yeah, I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. I was just curious. Uh, but thank you for caring. Hey, I do. I care about you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, I'm not really doing anything this week. Uh, uh, I know I'm uh I'm getting back into like old older gaming. Um, I know I want to get my uh, Laserdisc combination Genesis player like uh, fixed up, because uh, right now it just does Genesis. But if I can get the laser reader fixed up, I could do Sega CD. Uh, oh, cool. yeah. by the way, for those of you that don't know, some Laserdiscs came out with a auxiliary port, mm. and there was a, a specific Sega Genesis cartridge thing that you could plug in to play genesis games yeah this was a in this one particular was the uh laser at uh, laser active uh i yeah, think that's what i think uh like panasonic or it, it's a it's a cool thing it's a cool relic that i've got that uh i have a part i could fix but it would be lovely if i could get it to work because all i have is a genesis and it's still nice to have it's cool to have like old 90s like this was all built into one because everybody wants to have laser discs yeah uh, that's true 
but corner uh, of the market. All of it. That's yeah. true. <laughs> all of it. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, how about you guys? Uh, did I do anything interesting? Um, no, I don't. You sound boring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, uh, I, I, I decided to watch the uh, pilot episode of John Claude Johnson. Oh yeah, I haven't watched that yet. It was not that good. It wasn't good. <laughs> no. mm. John Claude Johnson. He's not a Highlander. No. <laughs> shame, shame. They're supposed to be rebooting it. Who fucking knows? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's got a full season order. No, I mean the Highlander. Or, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, they've, talk, they've talked about rebooting Highlander for. <laughs> Dude, it's one of those movies like, this is going to sound like no way, shit for ordered, any movie. Oh, ordered sweet. The, the movie. <laughs> this, this is going to be like, oh, no shit for any movie. This makes sense. But, like, could you imagine if they fucking, like, did up the Highlander? Like, the fuck, like, with all, like, the bet, like, took it fucking seriously? That would be fucking dope as shit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like, just lopping beheadings. Um, it wouldn't have the budget to match, though. Like, when they redid Kickboxer. No, but I mean, like, I mean, if they, you know, if they gave it, like, someone, like, some, like, big wig dude was like, I'm gonna fucking make the Highlander movie. Um, like, who would be like someone? They, like, they, uh, like, John Carpenter did with the thing. Like, I'm trying to think someone, like, uh, just someone who has, like, some pull who, mm. like, one day woke up and was like, I'm gonna make a fucking Highlander reboot. Uh, Max Lynn. No, I was about to <laughs> no, say. <laughs> no. Is there nothing he won't touch? Um, Joel Silver? Or are we talking like director, like, director, like director. Peter Berg? Imagine no, Peter Berg. No, because it, it, yeah, it'll be Mark Wahlberg, and it'll just be a lot of like <laughs> slow mo. Or imagine a, uh, a what's Michael his, Bay, the guy that did um, <laughs> dude, the guy American that did flags everywhere in <laughs> the Scottish Highlands. Oh uh, David God. Ayers. Imagine a David Ayers Highlands. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> just like the fucking like the movie starts off, and he's just angry as shit. He, the movie starts off, he's fucking butt ass naked, his dick's just hanging out, and he's like, <laughs> "I'm gonna fuck everybody up." And he starts slopping <laughs> heads off. It just fucking balls a, to the wall the whole movie. A Fetty Alvarez Highlander. Let's let's bring, oh yeah. Let's bring this thing full full circle. Okay. Oh. David Lynch Highlander. Ooh. Ooh. There it can be only one. <laughs> <laughs> there can be only one. And then he cuts open the the maggot pulsating maggot baby, and it's like, blah, 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 blah. and you're just like, this is the most horrifying shit I've ever seen. That's bringing it full circle because eraser head. Yeah. Um. My heads are lopped in that shit. There's some fallen heads in there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But yeah, I, I don't want to see a David Lynch. Uh, I don't want to see a David Lynch Highlander. Um, <laughs> no, God, no. What about the guy who did uh, John Wick? Ooh. There was, well, I was two directors. First John Wick, because we haven't seen the The guys one. that did John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're still doing the second one, right? Yeah. One or of them, Tim Miller. Comes one out of in them, like two weeks. One of them directed uh, John Wick Chapter 2. The other one directed uh, Coldest City with uh, Charlize Theron and James McAvoy. Uh-huh. Uh, they They... What about Tim Miller? Tim Miller, that'd be hmm. interesting. I mean, he's free now. So. Yeah, he is yeah. free. Well, supposedly, he's tapped for the Terminator reboot. Ah! You know about that? James Wait, Cameron's another... com- Well, no. James Cameron is coming back with Tim Miller to f- end the Terminator series. And uh, James uh, Cameron gets the rights back in 2019. So there, that's the rumor that uh, there are two of them are... His, agree with the, uh, his agreement with the studio in exchange for him being able to direct it was that he would give up creative control or at least uh, creative ownership for 35 years. Came out in '84, so that would be 2019. Let's wow. just make a fan film trailer for Highlander. <laughs> Let's <laughs> just fucking do it, man. Let's make a fan film. It can't, it can't be difficult. We it's just have a. It would be better than Highlander three. Yeah, just yeah. like a two and a half minute Highlander. Let's get a Nerf sword. Fucking yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, just it's all about the sword, man. And but just Queen playing in the background. Mm-hmm. The seven seas of right. The seven seas of right. Yeah, we'll pick Queen that's not from Highlander. <laughs> yeah. Flash. Ogre, ogre ah! battle, ogre battle would be the best. Even though he doesn't fight ogres, but maybe he does in the fan film. Who knows? The Highlander, <laughs> the Highlandiest <laughs> with the best friend. All right. Um, okay. So yeah. Okay. Again, thanks again to Gabriel Hardman for coming on the show. The Belfry is out in oh, complex so shops good. everywhere. It's great, and it's out on February twenty second. Can't wait. Invisible Republic out now, as along with Kinski. So yeah, definitely check out both of those. And uh, yeah, this has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. And I'm Ken. Thank you very much. Woo. Night, Eric Bana. Fried chicken. Woo-hoo. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual Catching Up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening. <laughs>